Hey, it's your boy Simba the Dying. I'm rocking with Pin Drop Discussions. Okay then. It's your boy DJ KP. You now tuned in to Pin Drop Discussions. The most high and the most blessed. This is your girl Tiani. Thank you for tuning in to Pin Drop Discussions. It's your girl Jayla. You're now tuned in with Pin Drop Discussions, the liveest podcast on the East Coast. You are now tuned in to Pin Drop Discussions. This is Tyler Parker. And Tim Bro Cunningham. Today we're going to be talking about motivation and encouragement. And we have an original Pin Drop Discusser here today. Was goody. I'm happy. It feels like forever since I did one, though. I know. It has been forever since you've done one. On episode 30 now. Ooh, we're on 30 now? We're on 30. Exciting. Exciting stuff, yeah. It is. So tell me, what do you think about motivation and encouragement? Those two go hand in hand. You have to be motivated in order to do something. You have to like encourage yourself to, to be motivated in order to do something. So. I feel you. You do have to be encouraged and motivated in order to do something. So I think one example that is like the most prevalent is going to class or like graduating is mm-hmm. like the end goal. So are you like more motivated to go to class because you like going to class <laughs> or are you more motivated? motivated to go to class because you're trying to graduate and i'm trying to graduate <laughs> i feel you oh man but i do love what i'm I do love what I do, though. So, like, mm-hmm. it goes hand in hand, like I said beforehand, because I'm a journalist. So, therefore, like, I love to write. Like, I'm motivated to write. I love writing. Like, you can ask me to, like, put a pen to a paper or, like, my hands to the keys. I'm good. I'm motivated. I'm I'm just, that's me all day. all day. Okay, I got you. I like that. So, does anybody, like, have to motivate you to do that? Or are you just, like, it just comes from, like, an inward drive? No, that's an inward drive. I feel you. Mm-hmm. So what does that come from though? Like why do you so why do you want to be a journalist? What is it that like what is it that you love about, you know, writing or typing? Basically, I've been writing since I was six. Mm -hmm. So I always used to like writing and like showing people my stuff. And like when I showed them that, sometimes it brought motivation to like ask me like, oh, what are you going to do next about this? Where are you going to take this story next? And like I always liked that. Um, So I thought like, I like this. This is kind of (laughs) cool. So like I'm going to just keep this going. It's encouragement. That's Mm -hmm. what's up. I was looking at some articles about that earlier. Intrinsic motivation is a desire to do or achieve something because one truly wants to and takes pleasure or sees value in doing so. Extrinsic motivation is a desire to do or achieve something not for the enjoyment or the thing itself, but because doing so leads to a certain result. And that is from Pinterest 2003. It's a study going to be referenced on the description section. Some refer to this divide as the difference between true motivation and encouragement. So I guess like motivation and encouragement exist in the same place. Like it goes hand in hand. Yeah, it goes hand in hand, but they're but they're different. I guess motivation is what is motivation to you? Motivation is like it pushes me. It gives me an extra oomph to get up in the morning or it gives me an extra boost to do something that I really don't want to do. Facts. Yeah, I I can feel that because sometimes, like today, was a big one. I didn't feel like coming here. And I was like, you know, I didn't do an episode yesterday because I didn't have the motivation for it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, I, I kind of need to do it today because I know I, I want to. I can I can definitely get behind that. See? Motivation. It was uh, This definition of motivation says mm-hmm. that it is a hope to generally succeed in life, whether that means being admitted to a top college or getting a certain job, uh, or is it a promise of concrete reward that drives them to succeed? And I guess that's where those two types of motivation comes into play, because it can be the either internal or external is like the easiest way to say it. And then there's like a little quote, it's like a word of encouragement during failure is worth more than an hour of praise after success. So I feel like you have to be kind of motivated. You have to be motivated to, I don't want to say that's a hard one, but mm-hmm. low key kind of is. Because like, we're still, well, well, basically we're still trying to like define where motivation comes from, right? Right. So therefore, I don't know, I would have to say like mostly like a divine being. I feel like... You can't really look at motivation being that it can come from internal or external. You can't really look at 
either of those without looking at the total picture and being that the divine is part of the total picture. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that a lot of our energy comes from a place that is not just inside of our own body. Because, I mean, um, it was like one principle in science that like always stuck with me. It was like uh, matter can't be created nor destroyed. And energy is like literally the same thing. Like energy is always going to exist. So it's going to exist outside of us. So then, like, how do we pull that energy in mm-hmm. in order to have it in really anyway, you know, because. It's like you think of the same thing. Right. <laughs> same thing. Oh, my gosh. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, well, the next thing we can talk about is, like, underlying about the important the importance of love. Yeah. Because, like, we, mm-hmm. before all this, we were saying, like, encouragement, motivation, mm-hmm. all that follows the umbrella of love. Right. So, basically, you have to be motivated to love somebody. Right. Because, like, if you're, like, not, motiva- not motivated, then, like, basically, you're just going to, like, walk around like a slug all day. That's true. Yeah. That is highly true because we need love to thrive. Like that is, I feel like that's the energy that we are that we thrive off of. Is that love, that care? That's where encouragement comes from. Because you know you have to be able to give love in a in a way that it can be received. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just feel like that healthy love <laughs> is important. Healthy encouragement is important because we have to be encouraged to love somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, like. It's not easy loving people. It's really not. Because, like, <laughs> I, um, I heard it somewhere. Um, I don't remember where I heard it from, but, like, you're supposed to, like, love yourself first as you love God. Continue to love yourself, then love your, then love others. Mm-hmm. Like, how you, how you see yourself and how you love others. Mm-hmm. But at, at other times, I'm just like, how am I gonna, how am I going to show them love that I have for myself? Because that's high. Right. That's really high. But, like, when they continue to, like, just... Be themselves. Be themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, that's where you have to, like, encourage yourself and right. motivate yourself to love them. Because, like, it's really hard loving people. It is. It is. And, I like, the part that helps me is I can say that you know, I had to come to a place where I, I obviously love Tyler mm-hmm. enough to say, okay, um, <clears throat> I need to take a step back from this person for like a quick second and not in a, not in a sense that I was like cutting them off, but it's just, I just couldn't have them so close mm-hmm. to, to the point where I would put them on a pedestal or to a point where I would begin to judge them mm-hmm. and removing that element of judging them also helped me remove the element of judging myself so a lot of times I can see myself like slipping and falling and doing things and I'm like oh um that's not what I intended to do mm, see Tyler you're a good one because mm-hmm. like me personally I would mm-hmm. just snip snip you gotta go you know it's, Be- yeah, it's not always healthy to cut people off it's though. it's not but it's effective it gets the point across. Yeah. Because, like, when you went on, once you cut them off, they'll be like, oh, you were serious, serious. Right. Like, after I told you, like, once or twice, and you're not, like, gonna, like, and if you're not going to, like, follow up from what I said, and I have, I gave you, like, these problems that you need to fix, and you're not gonna do that, what's the point of even staying? Well, um, are you talking about like a romantic relationship or are you talking about like a friendship? I like either. They go either. hand in hand. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, but some people have like different standards for a relation. Like they have not. Well, yeah, different standards, standards. for relationships um, as opposed to friendships. You know, because sometimes we'll deal with a toxic relationship more than we'll deal with a toxic friendship or we'll deal like or vice versa. Mm-hmm. You know, it just depends because it's like, oh, that's my friend. Like they're excused. But you wouldn't put up with that from, like, anybody else. Like, um, I know with, obviously, family, there's different standards. You mm-hmm. know, people are like, you know, fam- blood is thicker than water, that thing. Um, and it's just, like, I feel like I could give somebody a standard of how I want them to communicate to me. You know, but I have to take it, like, psychology is 
teaching me a lot, you mm-hmm. know, about learning somebody else's circumstances and realizing that God kind of looks at our circumstances in a full picture is amazing to me because he, it's not like he says, OK, well, Tyler, don't go associate with this person. And I have to catch myself a lot of times because, you know, I do it based off of, you know, just a quick Appearance. look. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, this person is like, OK, like, wait a he's minute. He's a thug. Like, I ain't doing it. Like, yeah. she, she, uh, hmm, I'm not doing it. Right. Yeah. I hey. cut. Yeah, everybody yeah. can feel that. Mm-hmm. It's like prejudice because it's what's ingrained in us, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like we see it every single day. You know, er- and the thing that I've come to is like I'm not going to call another brother a thug. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to call another sister a hoe. You know, I'm like, okay, well, she might have some, some tendencies mm-hmm. and a brother might, you know, he might have, have some, some tendencies, tendencies. You know, it's like, but at the end of the day, there was a a quote that somebody said, I can't remember who it was. We said he, you shouldn't be defined by like their sickness, mm-hmm. you know, because it was like um, it it was something to the extent where they had an illness where it was like bipolar or something like that, like a bipolar disorder. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he said that you can't define me by my disease. And I feel like God says a lot of times, like you can't define this person by their situation because he definitely says that to me all the time. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo. I don't feel like doing this. Like earlier today, it was just like, yo, this is not your permanent place. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, this is not, I'm not defining you by your situation. I think that's why we have to like continue to encourage each other to, to not see each other like where our circumstances are projecting, mm-hmm. you know, because I feel like that's our outward appearance is our projection of these circumstances. But what happens when encouragement doesn't work anymore? I feel like that's a inward encouragement i feel like i feel like that's that um external encouragement Mm -hmm. because it's where we're desiring a goal for this person because of selfish desires you know because like my my idea of say let's take a wife my idea of a wife is you know um somebody that um can be a partner cook clean because obviously you know i cook and clean and do Mm -hmm. all these things as well and, you know, now I'm starting to pick up more, like, outside things, you know, um, picking up some chores. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, we should be able to share in this and not only share in chores and tasks, but also in the relationship aspect of communication, loving each other. I've got kids, so obviously it would be, like, um, mm-hmm. sharing and parenting and sharing in these practices where we're trying not to um, over-parent, but we're just allowing the children to you know, grow up and be children and just just having that desire to acquire the knowledge so that they can grow up in a in an environment that is not dictated by like the news, the media, mm-hmm. other people, just allowing them to be the next generation to see the change that we want to instill. You know, so that that's kind of what I want to see in a partner. Now am I gonna get somebody like that a hundred percent you know <laughs> like no. Yeah, so I can't be like, okay, well, I'm going to go build it. Basically, so you out. want someone that's equally yoked. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I, and I do. Because um, a lot of times you spend a lot of time trying to work on somebody as opposed to work with somebody. Mm-hmm. And working on somebody typically ends up in you working on somebody for somebody else. And I just don't. <laughs> yeah, because like if I'm that. if I'm spending like two years with you, I don't mm-hmm. want you to like you're not going nowhere. Right. I'm not. I'm. I don't mean it like as in a crazy sense, but like yeah. if I wasted two years with you and like you're you're like the perfect man for me. Right. Dog, come yeah. on, dog. Yeah, it come it's, on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, cause it happens though. Um, you like you literally say. You'll wake up one morning and be like, you know, I don't think this is working anymore. Right. And everything that you said over the course of your relationship, like, they automatically <clears> just get like, oh, wait a minute. What, how'd you get it with that person? But mm-hmm. you, didn't, you didn't get it with me. Like, how did, how did that work? And sometimes it's because they gave them one more thing that you didn't, which was time. Effort. Yeah, encouragement. Exactly. Motivation. Yeah. And it's not even, it's like you put in all of that work during that time. Mm-hmm. 
and it's like that time didn't go to waste, but you just didn't see it through. So that's why I say, I mean, sometimes you never know, like you can't really give up on people because we don't, we don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know how long it's going to take for us to get right. <laughs> like, I'm still waiting. Just yeah. saying. Like, I'm still waiting. Like, God, look, you got to <laughs> look at me. Like, hey, we, we had these conversations beforehand. Like, come on. Come like, on. big fella, you know me. <laughs> you know. I'm just trying to get right. I'm just out here we, trying to function. We <laughs> all trying to get right before he comes. <laughs> exactly. Because, like, when he, he, he'll he be like, so what happened to this, this, and that? Right. Thank God we talked about that. Right. We talked about it. We did. We not go. Come on. Amen. So, yeah. I feel you. I do. So I just want to, like, um, touch base on this, like, article that I, that I researched. And I found, like, literally... 30 minutes ago Mm -hmm. and it was talking about in the new testament of the bible the apostle paul exhorts christians to encourage one another particularly those who are disheartened and a lot of us are walking around with like broken hearts Mm -hmm. and it can be from church hurt it can be from relationship it can be um just from anything it can be from school academics it can be from ourselves we could break our own hearts because we're just not doing what we want to do, Mm -hmm. you know, um, or what we think we should be doing and having those expectations. And I feel like understanding that we're here to love and encourage each other helps us to have that motivation. And it will encourage us to do better academically. It will encourage us to do better financially, spiritually, um, socially. Because we're we're driven off of these relationships, and the theory of like learning and motivation is uh it's like a form of humanistic psychology, mm-hmm. which is basically where we could take where our best selves is in our potential. You know, it's like we always have the potential to be better, and we always have the potential to in not just the potential, but the potential and the resources to better ourselves. Because, I mean, we can. Like, they're in books. I mean, and really, they're in each other, you know. That's so. true. But I've always heard that, like, if someone said, oh, you have the potential to do this, that, and the fourth. I always took it as, like, an insult. It, it kind of is. Because what it is, again, it's like that they don't see you for you. They, they see, see you as situation. something. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, I mean, this could have been better. And then again, it's like their own idea mm-hmm. in their head. Of is what reflecting you onto you. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So it's like, you don't have to take that. Like, I used to take that a lot. I used to take that hard. Oh, no. You used to be like, oh, you got potential. And even now, people will say, pin drop discussion has so much potential. I'm like. Don't say that. Well, it is where it is for a reason. I mean, because, like, it'll it'll grow. Yeah. I have faith in this. It'll grow. Well, I'm crying. (laughs) I just had to shed real tears. Oh, my gosh. You're so annoying. I am, (laughs) but it's okay. Uh, And Oh, going back to uh, what you was talking about um, in the New Testament uh, Mm -hmm. about breaking hearts, that Mm -hmm. also reminded me of uh, this quote. Well, not really a quote, like Mm -hmm. lyrics from Mally Music. Shout out to Mally Music because he's the awesome, he's the goat. Uh Um, uh, In his new-ish album, uh, I forgot the album. (laughs) But it was in his new album, uh, in the song Love By You, when he first starts off with it, he was like, uh, trust me, it'll break your heart. Mm. Ugh. Sometimes, sometimes it really, like you said, we really do be breaking our own hearts because, like, there are, like, certain situations that we really didn't have to put ourselves through. But we, we do it just for the sake of it. Because, like, we're conscious, well, not really conscious beings, but, like, we're, like, curious. And, right. and we don't want to leave anything out, like, what if we we never want to hear that question? What if? Right. So. Yeah, we don't. Cause there's actually a book my mom was reading called "What If," or it was called "If," and um, you know, she was just telling me about it, and I was just like, "Why do we continue to live in those scenarios of if? Why don't we just live in the scenario of we did? 
you know like mm-hmm. i don't i don't know looking backwards sometimes causes you to miss what's like right in front of you you know i feel like that happened to me plenty of times yeah. like always looking back at like past things yeah uh, i've always like it always like hinder me to like mm-hmm. move forward in life and i I've just gotten over, like, everything. Uh, well, I want to say that I've just gotten over <laughs> everything. And I'm, I'm I'm decreeing and declaring that I have. Right. Um, but, yeah, also looking back is, like, it's, it doesn't really help. Because, like, you'll always be like, oh, this guy, this guy hurt me. This, the next guy is going to hurt me like this. Oh, my friend did this to me. Oh, sh- Another a person is gonna do that to me. Right. So it's just it it hurts at the end of the day, but we all just have to get over it. So you know that is uh, that is one way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to take those lessons as teachable moments. You know, because they are very. Um, Sometimes we have to fall on our face to learn. So oh, we do. We do. Is it, uh, t- uh, I'm telling you, like, now my last teachable moment that I've had, that I have thought about probably every day for um, probably a little over five, five or six months, mm-hmm. um, is just pushing me to a higher place. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, I can, I can get with that. You know, I can get with the looking at your past, not to say that this behavior will repeat, Mm -hmm. but that there needs to be a change in behavior and not in a change in that person's behavior, Mm -hmm. but a change in yours. Oh, wow. Okay. I just caught a revelation. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Always working like that. I don't like it, but it's mm, okay. Because like it's. Lately, it's been a brick wall. Yeah. And so, like, I'm like, well, God, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. But he was like, are you praying about it? Are you seeking me? All right. (laughs) Okay. I just like, "Mm, never mind. Just (laughs) (laughs) keep going. Because, like, every single time, every single time he does this, I I catch a revelation. And I'm Mm -hmm. just like, well, like, I'm doing this, this, and that. And... He keeps telling me, he keeps like trying to hit me with a brick wall and I'm just like, I don't want to hit the brick wall. (laughs) Like, just let me, just let me do it. And then like every single time, excuse me, Mm -hmm. every single time is like a very, like, like you said, teachable moment. Right. (sighs) It's real. It is real. (laughs) It is very real. And I don't like, I don't like his, I don't like the way how he does it, but Mm -hmm. it's necessary. Oh yeah. It's necessary. it's necessary because like it's like it's like a father. He's he is he, a, yeah. he is a father, but yeah. like it's like a a like a actual physical father like teaching you, like showing you what love is and he's saying like I'm not gonna I'm motivating you to love me like uh okay. I'm I'm getting too excited about this. <laughs> oh, no, you're I'm, good. I'm getting it's, way too excited about this. Excitement is good. I know. And passion is good. That's I just know. the part that you know um, that causes us to grow. Mm-hmm. You know, when we have that that passion and that desire, because we need that heat. You know, there's no um, there's nothing that really grows without sunlight mm-hmm. and also water. So it's good. This is really good. Um, so, but we've all we've basically talked about all the positives. But what are the negatives? The negatives? The, we stay away from the negatives. No, I mean, <laughs> that's true, but like we also have to like we have to visit the negatives in mm-hmm. order to understand like mm-hmm. what makes them so bad. Okay. Um You see what I'm putting down? Yeah. Okay. So, the negatives would be like um, negative reinforcement, mm-hmm. and that's something that we kind of covered last semester in psychology. Um, and negative motivation. Yeah. Like, does it affect what behavior change or no? It like, does. Because, um, like, the article was talking about was there's levels to motivation, and some levels work. And the way that there's levels is because some are more effective than others. Mm-hmm. And 
some methods of encouragement are more effective than others, I should say. And the part that negative motivation comes into play is every person is different. So take, for example, my mother. She is motivated off of people telling her what she can't do. You know, and a lot of a lot of people are they're affected positively by negative motivation. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I can take this and I can tell you, you know, like what, what I can my, do. what I can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're not going to tell me what I can't do. And that's great for people like me. That does not work. Like you, you can't give me negative motivation because I'm like, um, I'm going to be depressed. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to fall right into anxiety. I'm like, uh, maybe you're right. You know, like, I know myself, but now I'm going to sit there and question, like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, Can is this I some- actually do it? Right. Like, like you, do you see something in me that is I this, need to work Is on? this plan actually going to, like, fall through? Can you see, like, the future or something? Exactly. And that's when there's, a there's like, a term in basketball. It's, like, know your personnel. Mm-hmm. So, like, let's say we're both playing basketball and the person is guarding you. Let's say you're a good shooter, right? Mm-hmm. And the person that's guarding you is playing you close. So that basically means that they're not going to allow you to get your shot up because they know you can shoot, right? So that means that I shouldn't pass you the ball knowing that you can't perform in that situation. So it's like knowing your personnel. So let's say you're a parent and in the same situation, you are trying to encourage your child because a lot of this encouragement and motivation, uh, a lot of the research is done around like education and childhood development. So... If you're trying to, if you're a parent trying to encourage your child, and obviously that's not putting them in a predicament to perform well, mm-hmm. that motivation is not going to work because it's like, oh, well, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you performing well? I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the ball. I'm like, giving why aren't you, you the tools. I'm giving you the tools. Why aren't you succeeding? And then it produces a negative result. And then if you have like a lack of motivation, then you have a des- a lack for a desire for learning then you're probably going to fall into depression, anxiety, and it's just not going to be healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, and the the tools <clears throat> that you need at that point are at least some some forms of positive reinforcement. And I don't know, like, what has your experience been with negative uh, motivation? Ooh. There's so many. There are really so many, but my mind is drawing a blank on all of them. <laughs> it's like too many. To, I know. We uh, get it all the time. Um, Dance. Do you want to get that personal? I guess so. No, all right. You threw it out there already. <laughs> right. Um. Okay, so... Uh, Back in high school, I started dancing. Mm-hmm. Really loved it. Really did. Uh, mm-hmm. Came to St. Aug. They didn't have a dance department. Mm-hmm. Quit it. Mm-hmm. Three years. In the dance world, that's trash. Like, throw it away. Mm-hmm. You're not a dancer no more. <laughs> um, uh, many times, many times I come across somebody saying, oh, your technique is horrible. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, what are you doing? You can't dance. Oh, mm-hmm. what are you, like... The list goes on and on. Like, you're too right. small to be a dancer. Like, right. you're not quick enough on your feet. Uh, so all that tied into, like, I guess me stopping. And uh, when I try to get back into it, it's like, oh, I found my first love again. But I can't do, I can't dance like how I used to dance. And I can't get that feeling how I used to feel back Mm -hmm. again so it's like why even try so i just like throw my shoes back into a corner Mm -hmm. let them collecting dust for like three more years so i feel you and i think i feel the same way about basketball sometimes and it's not that i get like negative encouragement from that but it's just the older that you get Mm -hmm. the more that negative encouragement starts to build on you yeah. and it's like a weight so it's like it's not that it doesn't feel the same but it's it's kind of i don't know if it happens to you but like you can hear the voices yeah yeah and this is like so am i really gonna do this am i wasting my time like like and, am i can i really do this again like yeah. this is this is like just quit you know i was having a conversation with a friend recently about um fear 
Mm-hmm. And she was saying that a baby is not born with fear. Like, fear is learned. And I feel like it's like the same thing with negative encouragement. Mm-hmm. So we learn to embrace that negative encouragement once it's given so much. You know, once it's like, oh, okay, well, why why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And then we're prone to react the way that we see other people react from negative encouragement. And... It's a comfort, basically. It, it becomes a comfort if you, like, if you, if you get to know it long enough, <clears throat> then it becomes what you were accustomed to. So, like an alcoholic, if what they, one drink is cool at first. You're like, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm good. And I can get tipsy off one drink. Mm-hmm. Two drinks is oh, okay. Now I'm getting tipsy. It takes two drinks to get tipsy. Now it takes three, and it takes four, and you just keep mm-hmm. building and building and building, and eventually. It's just like, oh, I'm, I don't have a problem, but you kind of do. Because you're like popping bottles like at in the morning, two, eight in the morning, in the afternoon, eight in the morning, in the morning. It start in the morning. Oh my god. Yeah, some people and some people actually live for that though. Mm-hmm. And in the same sense, it's some people that wake up and live for drama, or some people that wake up and live for being that source of negative encouragement, mm-hmm. were probably encourage negatively themselves and it's like oh yeah I, I need that i need to get that feel of putting somebody else down and in turn the people that are put down are like well maybe i just need some more because <laughs> we're getting used to it it's like i, I could use i could use a little bit more because it's, it's gonna take me a little bit to, mm-hmm. you know to get to what i'm to what i'm used to because we like that i don't know that feeling of being down mm-hmm Cause then, like if you're as if you're as low as you can possibly go, people can't push you any lower. That's true, but that also like causes depression and uh, su- um, suicide. So, it does, <laughs> and anxiety. It Let does. me tell you, those two, those two are best friends, and I do not like them. They are not welcome at my house. I feel you. They are not. That's good. I I, I cannot. Mm-hmm. I've dealt with them before. I don't want to deal with them no more. Right. Like. Mm, Nope. You know, I still deal with them, mm-hmm. um, but I keep them out of my place of work. Mm-hmm. I keep them out of my. I try to keep them out of my house. Mm-hmm. Like at least if if I can't keep them out of my house, at least keep them out of one room in my house. Yeah, because like you know? right now they in the they in the yard they yeah. in the they they trying to be in the um they trying to get in, um knock on my door. I'm just like. Mm. You can't come in. Like I can't. Yeah. Can't. You don't want depression and anxiety where you lay your head. Oh I'll God. I just tell you that. Yes. It's it's not a good feeling. No. It's really not. No. So uh, the best way to combat that is not to stay busy, mm-hmm. but to be passionate about what you're busy with. You know, because you don't you have you ever noticed like when you're doing something that you enjoy doing and you're doing it a lot and often you start to notice how much better you're getting. You're starting like, oh okay. Like with editing, I'm like, oh I'm getting better with editing. Mm-hmm. Like being in here. Like this is <clears throat> this is actually what brings me to St. Aug. And I'm like, oh I can I'm I'm comfortable. So like, do you want to be a radio personnel? I don't know. I don't I don't know. I like I just like pin drop discussions i like this vibe i love doing this you know mm-hmm. i love conversations mm-hmm. i just um this is I, I know this is what gets me out of bed i know that i don't have like our general manager cy young mm-hmm. like conversations with him conversations with um uh, uh, he's uh, dope. Doc, uh low um john low like conversations with dre conversations with kp conversations mm-hmm. with you like off the camera, off the radio, it's just mm-hmm. like, in here, this is the least place that I, I feel, just like, depression, that I feel anxiety, that I feel, Aww. yeah, it's, <laughs> Aww. yeah, it's, this is, um, this feels like home, mm-hmm. you know, and, home away from home, no, no, this feels like home, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> This feels like what home should feel like, you mm-hmm. know. And it's not because home is, is like crazy or anything. It's just that home should be a place that you grow. You know, like when you 
like when you leave your house to mm -hmm. go into the world, obviously everything else is going to attack you because the enemy wants to attack you like yeah. outside of that because he wants <clears> to destroy <throat> your home. You know, because if he can destroy your home and you're just walking around outside with him, then he's good. He's like, like, oh, oh. yeah, you, <laughs> you're right here. I don't got to do nothing. Aww. You know, so. I know where you are. Right. I can find you at any time. Yeah, but if you're in your homes, where, where is such and such? I can't find them. Yeah, because your, your home has a covering. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, a lot of times we we just forsake that covering which is peace and love mm -hmm. and encouragement and motivation <clears throat> because generations of being put down as a people, you know, is just something that we've become accustomed to, something that we used to do to our children a lot more mm -hmm. often than we do now. You know, now I kind of I kind of see there's a trend of giving children freedom. Yeah. And there's a trend of giving children freedom. And there's a trend of giving children too much freedom. Mm -hmm. And having that balance is a really hard place with this age that we're living in. Because, mm -hmm. you know, um, there is no balance. Like, this literally is, the goal is to destroy <clears throat> balance. No, oh, and another thing is, like, I, I love the fact how, like, everybody, like, of our... Uh, of um our race mm -hmm. is like shedding a light yeah. on to like like i guess me not mental like mental abuse mm -hmm. uh but with parents yeah because like you know how like you have those parents that'll be like uh how can i how can i say um ooh. anyway you have those parents that, like, be, like, they're all up on you. And, like, mm -hmm. they'll beat you with a belt even though, like, you know, that's that's how we were raised. But yeah. it's the fact that we couldn't actually say anything in order that, to protect us. Yeah, because uh, it's like you just do this and this is what I say and what I say yeah, goes. Yeah, what I say goes. Yeah, so that generation of parenting, I feel like, is dying out mm -hmm. because – of like recent studies and um, TV programs have helped it a lot because there's a lot of like psychologists that have gone into the uh, mass media mm -hmm. field in the production field. So they're like helping these, you know, production companies mm -hmm. with not only gaming, but with um, television programming and just building structure like, and like random broadcasting things. Yeah. and like everything to like get the get their point across and i, exactly. I really i really like that <clears throat> i really do because like um as as an african-american man and woman like yeah. we're always taught to like we can't say anything about it and like what we what we get is what we deserve yeah. and truthfully that's not true no that that's really not true because like as a kid, like I'm, as a kid, you're not supposed to go through like, like mental abuse. Like as a parent, yeah. you're supposed to like love and encourage, and motivate me, not like beat me, like beat me down like every chance that you get. Like that's yeah. come on, yeah, that's that's not cool. It is not cool. It's not cool at all. No, because I, I just think that they were, because I think one of my professors here. Um, that's now at Central said that we're only five generations removed from slavery. It's either five or seven. And basically what that means was our great, great, great grandparents were, there was a possibility of our great, great, great grandparents being slaves. Mm -hmm. So like five generations back. So that mentality of don't do what I say, listen to what I say comes from Them. the slave time, comes yeah. from the civil rights era. Like, okay, look, you can be hosed down at the least, you know, mm -hmm. like you can be killed, like you could be, you could be the next <clears throat> Emmett Till, and it's hard now, you know, because it's like you could be shot, and you know, um, shoot, you could be an Emmett Till today. You could, you could be a um, shoot. I, I done lost you all the names. A, you could yeah, be a Edgar, Ev Medgar Evans. Mm -hmm. You could be a Four Little Girls. You could be yeah. Sandra Bland. Everybody. Like, you be everybody. to reserve the rest of this conversation for next time it has been uh pin drop discussions and you guys have to tune into our next conversation because it is going to be a good one <laughs> so 
this is Timber Cunningham and this is Tyler Parker. And you are listening to Pin Drop Discussion. Thank you for tuning in to Pin Drop Discussions. This has been a pleasure. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did.